All right, welcome back to the channel. So, according to a uh, significant fighter, Isaac Chamberlain, who is a cruiserweight, who is sparred with Deontay Wilder, sparred with Tyson Fury, sparred with Anthony Joshua, he says that there is a reason uh, that he knows of a reason why the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight went the way that it went. And he share he didn't share the exact reason, but let's talk about what he said in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. Isaac Chamberlain makes a statement about Deontay Wilder and what was going on in his camp beforehand and makes a very startling uh, ad <sighs> information, provides pretty star startling information. I guess that's a, that's how my, that was my reaction to it. And thank you very much to the subscriber that sent it to me, that sent this link to this video to me uh, through Twitter. I really appreciate when you guys do that. If there's a real, if there's a piece of news you guys want to know about, hey man, hit me up on Twitter with a message or whatever. Let me know, you know, give me the information and I'll, you know, and I'll cover the information for you. In this particular incident, uh, there was an interview with Isaac Chamberlain and Isaac Chamberlain talked about the Deontay Wilder and what he said about Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury fight. And this is what he said. He said that he knows of personal information around Deontay Wilder and 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 confidential information around that around that camp that he cannot share, but he said that they were seriously considering canceling the the Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury fight before the fight began. That there was such a significant issue in Deontay Wilder's life that he that if it was not for the amount of money on the line for everybody that was involved, Deontay Wilder would have pulled out of the fight. Now, my reaction to that is, um, and, and then if you take that along with some of the things that Deontay Wilder has said since then, Deontay Wilder said he's gotten rid of a lot of snakes out of his camp. Um, obviously, that's not Mark Breland. That's not JD's. It's some people around him. I'm not quite sure, you know, who it is, but... You know, we'll be keeping our eyes out for it and seeing, OK, who are the usual people that are around Deontay Wilder and who exactly, you know, is not there anymore. But so and I don't know if that is directly connected to the personal issue, but, you know, that is something that could help explain why Deontay Wilder did not look like Deontay Wilder look like he didn't look like Deontay Wilder in that fight. Now, the funny thing is, though, when you say this, um. When you say this, people are going to act as if this is another excuse from Deontay Wilder. This was not an excuse from Deontay Wilder. This is not something that Deontay Wilder said. This is something that a sparring partner of his said, who is also a sparring partner of Tyson Fury's, also a sparring partner of Anthony Joshua, spars, all, you know, spars all of the top heavyweights, something that he said. And you could look on the expression on his face and he was like, yeah, man. There was something really major that happened to him. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. It's something, yeah, man, there was something really serious that happened to him in his per he referred to it as their his personal life. Something that happened to him in his personal life that was so severe that he, that if that was not for all of the money involved, Deontay Wilder would have pulled out of the fight to go take care of that issue. And that could have something to do with why Deontay Wilder's either his head wasn't in training, his head wasn't in the fight, but who knows what could have happened. But that is something that really can affect your performance and is not necessarily, it's not an excuse. But the reason that I bring that up is that that along with the fact that um, you hear guys like Jonathan Banks come out and Jonathan Banks is a is a crunk fighter, is a crunk trainer as well. He's a, if you're not familiar with him, he was the former trainer of Cecilia Bracus. He's the current trainer of he was also the former trainer of I can't believe I said Cecilia Bracus before I said former trainer of Vitaly Klitschko. I mean, of Vladimir Klitschko. He's also, I do believe, the current trainer of Gennady Golovkin, you know, out of Detroit, out of Crunk Gym was an assistant trainer or mentor of Emmanuel, Emmanuel um, Stewart. I always say Emmanuel Lewis, which is the little dude Emmanuel from the 1980s sitcoms. <laughs> Shout out to Blood, the boxing, uh, to Blood Boxing Documentaries, <laughs> Retro and Documentaries. 
Um, he says that, you know, Deontay Wilder just has a few things that he needs to change. You know, this camp needs to sit down with him, you know, and work on specific things and that he has plenty of time. He has plenty of time to get better. But that, you know, whenever you fight a guy that is that big, that is that much bigger than you, that's bigger and a boxer, they're always going to be difficult to beat. Just like, you know, a Rid- he, and he compared Tyson Fury in that regard to a Riddick Bow or to uh, Lennox Lewis, you know, and just saying, man, that's just a difficult guy. to That's a difficult fi- guy to fight at that particular time. And he said Deontay Wilder came into the fight doing the same thing he always does, looking for, you know, looking for the knockout. But he couldn't get inside. He couldn't get in, couldn't get in range. And as a result, he lost the fight. But, you know, there's different things that he can change in the fight. They could change that. George Foreman says the same thing. Um, Buddy McGirt said, Buddy McGirt said the same thing and just life in general should tell you the same thing. If you do different things, you will get different results. And there's always, there's many ways to skin a cat and there's always a way to solve a problem that presents itself unless it's something that is absolutely positively terminal. You know what I mean? So anyway, Deontay Wilder, as far as how, what this means for the third fight, you know, I think that all of this, if Deontay Wilder needs to be in a very good place and everything needs to go right for him, not everything needs to go right, but you can't be having major issues in your life walking into the ring with a guy like Tyson Fury, who is a very, very big and and an excellent fighter. It's just a very tough thing, man. So, you know, I just now Deontay Wilder, though, didn't say anything about these issues. He said, maybe down the road, I'll let people, you know, I'll talk about or whatever. But I've, but it's interesting that if there's an issue that's the, out that that's that that's that, that is that big enough for a sparring partner to remember it. And trust me, look at the video that's out there on it and you'll see in the guy's face that he's like, ah, yeah, his head could not have been right based up off of that issue. Because what kind of personal issue could you have that would say, oh, man, this is serious enough where I pretty much just need to I need to cancel the fight because I won't be able to train properly. My head won't be in it. Now, I just can't do it. You know what I mean? Like if you were training for a fight and your and your mother passed away like three days before the fight, some people, it could be a scenario where, you know, it could really motivate you when you're going to do this for your mother or like do it for your father, like uh, like Buster Douglas with Mike Tyson, where he's like, nah, I'm going to do this for my dad. Or but, you know, that's the situation where Buster Douglas wasn't a champion was and just and got a lot of hunger out of that against a guy that wasn't very hungry. Right. Or you have Tyson or you you can have the um, Mike Tyson on the other side who got a lot of personal issues in his life that didn't focus for the Buster Douglas fight and winds up losing the Buster Douglas. But those things outside the ring really can outside of the ring or off out of the outside of the court or outside of your profession really can affect the way that you do your work. It's hard to have a day to day job and have something serious in your life happening that takes your focus away from your job. But yet you sit you can sit down and give your everything and all to something in just your day to day job. I mean, shoot, imagine being in that situation where you got a six foot nine, 300, 300 pound dude that can fight in front of you. And that's your job. That could be a very, very tough situation. Now, another issue that I wanted to talk around directly related to this, though, is that there that, you know, Deontay Wilder will have time for that to get to take care of that stuff. And there's a significant amount of time, dude, that that, that Bob Aram and Tyson Fury are going to try to wiggle out of that out of that wiggle out of the trilogy fight. Because I don't think it's a rematch. The concluding fight of the tri- trilogy. Because Bob Arum is saying maybe Tyson Fury needs to get a less expensive opponent because he needs to fight in America. He can't fight in the UK because he's grown such a tremendous, you know, he's done so so much, got such a tremendous um, a fan base, I guess he's alluding to in the United States. I don't think that's the case. Tyson Fury ain't had nobody in the United States watch his fights after the first Deontay Wilder fight. And if you put Tyson Fury out there against somebody, some other Tom Schwartz, nobody going to watch that either, man. The the um, the the momentum that Tyson Fury might got it off of Deontay Wilder, dude, has been act because ain't nobody even paying attention other than really hardcore boxing fans. When think when sports comes back. Man, it's going to be hard to get the eyes of Tyson Fury. Get the there's going to be so much sports on TV that it is going to be difficult in high level sports. I think that it's going to be difficult for Tyson Fury to blend in and 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 really get a fight that's going to stand out in front of people. Man, he's going to be back and fight, fighting in front of two thousand, three thousand people in uh, in a Las Vegas casino. Believe it. 
But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Got a couple more things to say. Please forgive me. <laughs> ah, man, this is not the best video, man. I did want to make a mention, though, that and very much clarify this, that I do believe that it is going that I favor Deontay Tyson Fury in that re, in that trilogy fight. Um, it's such a close, but I, I favor him, but I do not favor him to the extent that I think that it is impossible. Like many people are saying that it's impossible for Deontay Wilder to win and all of that. Cause that's just not how, that's just not how boxing goes, man. When you have the ability to knock somebody out and with one punch and you, that is always in that fight and all Deontay Wilder, not all Deontay Wilder does, but Deontay Wilder needs to just be able to get Tyson Fury something to think about and something to worry about other than the big right that the big right hand that he has. He needs to just be able to use his left hand better. And I had seen during some some phases in his career where his jab was improving. But then I think that because you know, he's able to usually fight guys that are very that are usually shorter than him that, you know, he can use his just his length and his arm length to stay further away from him. He didn't actually have to work himself in and underneath somebody else's somebody else's jab. So if he's able to uh, if he's able to make an adjustment with his left hand and make his left hand something that people have to worry about, even give it a little bit of thought about because they're concerned about it. In that case, Deontay Wilder will be able to knock people out very cleanly with their right hands and it might even make, make it easier to do so and not just rely on subtle angles, but also rely upon a the fear of his left hand. Anyway, it is what it is. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.